Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to The Collector's Den. I am The Collector's Detective, and today I am talking about Die again because I don't feel like I've been talking about this series enough. I was able to catch up on issues 8 and 9. And first things first, issue 8, I loved. I loved the artwork I have done throughout the entire series. Stephanie Hans, this artwork she's doing is, is just amazing. It's, it's something that I'm not usually drawn to, but it's so incredibly out there and and kind of crazy and it just looks beautiful it really 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 does and this issue especially has probably one of my favorite panels i'm going to show you there just fantastic and clank cows with the uh, colors truly a fantastic job this this series is without a doubt probably the greatest one out there at the moment it is truly exceptional and I, there is, there is no praise high enough. There is nothing I can say that is bad about this comic. Um, this issue, we get a little bit more detail from Matt, the Grief Knight. Um, it's interesting to see some of the things from his perspective, uh, like to do with his sword and uh, why he picked the sword. Mm. Why you pick the sword out of other things that have happened is really, really interesting. And then it, it just shows that we are getting more and more character depth. They started out as pretty fleshed out characters that you could really relate to to begin with. And we're slowly, slowly getting even more depth for the characters of them within the, the, the fantasy world of Dai. And it's truly, truly amazing. And, and while reading this, I... I am wondering what's happening in the outside world. I think that would be the only thing that I would say is, is lacking slightly in this, is that, is that it, you you are definitely following the characters through their like Jumanji journey, through, through Dai, through this fantasy world. But I would also kind of like to see what their, their disappearance and what their impact of, of not being in the home world actually has with their families, with their loved ones, with their work, with that kind of thing. Because as it's, ha it's happened before where they've gone away for was it 15 years, then they came back. And obviously we got a little bit of backstory where people were freaking out, they weren't too sure, they'd kind of given up and the, the children were dead. As adults, I would have thought there'd be a little bit more of an effect, but that's saying this series is phenomenal. It really, really is. And it's the kind of series that I, I, I sort of compare to Game of Thrones in that you can get a couple of issues very similar to 8 and 9 where it doesn't seem like much happens. There's very, very light on action. But yet you get so, so much information that you find out an incredible amount. And it's truly amazing. It's just... It's perfection in a comic. It really, really, really is. And in issue nine, we come across another literary figure. I'm not gonna say any spoilers because honestly, this is the kind of series I do not want to spoil at all. If you haven't started reading it, I would very much suggest going out and picking up that first trade of the first five, five issues. Very, very good. If you like it, carry on going with it, definitely. This is the kind of series that I could see going on for a very, very long time, and I'd be very happy for it to do so. Saying that, I do know Kieran Gillen has, has recently ended one of his last series, so I can imagine that he wouldn't take this to the point where it gets stale. He wouldn't carry on past the point where it's, it's, it's lost its integrity. And I am thoroughly enjoying where it's going at the moment. I want it to keep going. I want to keep just keep seeing these characters develop. I want to know more about the whole world. And there is obviously so much for them to to give us in terms of a backstory about what's happened with the characters, what happened while these characters were away in the real world, what's what's happening 
while these there there has been a split in the faction at one point and what happened while those two factions were were away from each other it's it's exceptional it really really is i would say anyone who does want to start picking this up definitely pick up that first trade that's probably going to be the best way to read it pick up that first trade give it a go if you are wanting to then catch up hold off because i as far as I'm aware, the second trade should be out relatively soon, uh, probably in the next couple of months. I do believe we have one more issue left in this arc, so that'll be the next trade coming out. And then uh, it's just a matter of, of seeing where we go from there. I'm loving this series. I I think Kieran Gillen is, is a fantastic writer. I think Stephanie Hunter's art is truly amazing and Clayton Cowles has done an incredible job with the colouring. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, to the point where he's playing with both colours and black and whites. So we have a we have an instance we have a moment in issue eight where one of the characters is, is talking about the past. And the past that we get, a couple of little panels, it's actually in black and white and it's really interesting to see when you when you compare it to the over essentially overexposed colours that we get of, of 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 the present day, and it's it's just amazing to to see. It really really is. So anyone out there, even on the fence, definitely give it a go. Would without a doubt say that this is the greatest series, uh, comic series out there right now. If you guys have started reading it or have read it, please, please, please let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love to hear from, from what you guys think. And I'll catch up with you in the next video.